All right, well, this week India's top court struck down a ban that had previously prevented uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, um, prevented banks from interacting with cryptocurrency exchanges in India. And with us now to discuss that further is Jalak Joben Putra, who's the founder and managing partner at Future Perfect Ventures. It's nice to have you back with us. Thanks for having me again. Okay, break down exactly what happened for us this week and how it, uh, what's different now versus before the ban. So in April 2018, uh, the Re Reserve Bank of India, uh, which regulates the banking system in India, uh, banned banks from interacting with any crypto exchanges and effectively uh, banned cryptocurrency as a result because anybody who was said to have dealt with uh, cryptocurrency uh, would be criminal, uh, a criminal under that system. Um, and, and so for two years, uh, we've had a challenge in the Supreme Court in India uh, around whether that ban was constitutional. And uh, after several delays uh, in the ruling, uh, finally yesterday, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that that ban was unconstitutional and uh, that the uh, RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, does not have the jurisdiction to, to ban cryptocurrency. And so what do you perceive is next from here? So we, we've seen a huge pent up demand in India uh, around uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, we actually have a portfolio company at Future Perfect Ventures, my fund, um, that we invested in 2016. And they were actually one of the leaders in challenging uh, the RBI uh, circular that went out in 2018. And they're back in business, as are several other uh, cryptos that kind of uh, crypto exchanges that had to uh, kind of put things on hold. Several went out of business. Several just sh shuttered uh, their doors. So we're we're definitely seeing, and uh, you know, I think the um, the the price increase. Uh, it's not only India; it's, it's South Korea today that followed with also. Um, uh, ruling that crypto exchanges could operate after having effectively banned them. So, so with those two moves, two major markets in the world around crypto, um, we're we're going to see more activity. Now, that does not mean that uh, the the RBI can't go back and and ban crypto, and and that's something we have to watch for. Mm -hmm. But I think what we've seen around the rest of the world is that this is. This is a sector and demand that is not going to go away, regardless of what the government say. Uh, you were just in India. Tell us about the mood there and the vibes. I mean, are, is it too early to say that we're going to see some kind of boom in activity going forward? I mean, it seems like it's just so well primed for blockchain innovation and for crypto innovation. I mean, 1.3 billion people from what I gather below average to no banking services, um, you know, lots of high level corruption. But I mean, is that sort of uh, premature optimism to say that we're going to see this sudden boom in activity? Well, we've already started to see a boom in activity over the last 24 hours uh, based on what I've been tracking. Uh, like this is a country that has a huge unbanked population, but we also have a government there that has been uh, uh, proponents of digital banking and mobile banking, Paytm, and, and a number of companies uh, have been growing on the mobile banking side. And uh, they have a government scheme that biometrically authenticates most of the citizens and then allows them to connect to bank accounts. So uh, the government has done a lot to uh, bring the unbanked uh, to the banking system. Mm. And it would follow that because of that infrastructure being more and more in place, people uh, want to have investment opportunities now that they're able to store and save uh, money in their banking accounts. Where does India rank with regard to the cryptocurrency appetite among some of the largest nations that have tried to put some regulation around the space as a whole? So I can say I was there in 2016 yeah. um, when uh, the government went through a demonetization scheme. And that meant that they actually put 
the largest banknotes, um, uh, they deemed them illegal almost uh, overnight. Wow. And uh, that was in an effort to get rid of the black market illegal cash that was floating around, move more money to digital uh, banking yeah. so that it could be more easily tracked. Now, Bitcoin's price at that time was around probably 800 or so, but it traded at a 25% at premium wow. uh, to the international exchanges. So the company we invested in um, in, in India, they uh, they operated an exchange, they operate an exchange there, and, and they were seeing huge volumes. So I think that goes to show that there is huge demand. Um, there's a lot of interest in holding these assets. Um, and I think the government has realized they need to move towards some sort of regulation instead of an outright ban. Now, we'll, we'll, you know, it's still to be determined what the next step there will be. Uh, Facebook is testing its payments product in India. Mark Zuckerberg has said that they're rolling out WhatsApp Pay in six months, even though the license application is still kind of in limbo. Um, and then Libra this week, it's reported that they're kind of changing their strategy and it's not going to look like what Facebook initially pitched. It's going to be several different stable coins that are backed to different existing um, state currencies. Mm -hmm. How is this all going to culminate in the end? What is this going to mean for competition and what should we expect to watch at India, India versus Facebook over the next few months? Well, India has, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, they've been very much uh, uh, a proponent of moving transactions, identities, uh, KYC, everything to a digital format. And uh, they just implemented a GST, Global uh, uh, Goods and Services Tax. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and so they're really looking towards making sure that they can um, uh, realize tax revenues. And, and so what I think they did here uh, with uh, the Supreme Court ruling and, and what we'll look for next is to see if they really truly are looking to um, give their con consumers and citizens options versus cutting them off further from the banking system. But one thing we're seeing with Facebook's Libra uh, in countries around the world is that uh, governments are not going to give up uh, uh, their uh, the power they have over the central banks and, and monetary system. Yeah. And any company that wants to uh, to have any sort of scale in these regions are going to have to work with the governments and, and, and not uh, against them. All right. Always a pleasure to get your insights. Jalak Jobin Futra, who is the founder and managing partner at Future Perfect Ventures. Thanks again. Thank you. Absolutely.